Well, it is a rainy, nasty week. I've got nothing but rain for a few days, and I'm not able to get out and detect. So how about a good detecting story? This is probably the best metal detecting story I think I've ever heard. And it was probably the first metal detecting story ever told. This story starts, let's go back to 1865 in the month of April. Now, that's a pretty big month in 1865. If you know history, that's when Lincoln was assassinated. So there's Lincoln in Ford Theater and John Wilkes Booth shoots him in the head. Now, the first doctor on scene, he shows up and he does just enough to keep Lincoln alive for just a short time. Now, this doctor worked at the Armory Hospital locally there, and his superior, the man that ran that Armory Hospital, was a man by the name of Dr. Bliss. Now, when I say his name was Dr. Bliss, that was really his name. Doctor was not just a title, it was actually his first name. Talk about pressure growing up. I guess it was assumed what this guy was going to be. So Dr. Bliss, he's the one we want to talk about. Who is this guy? Well, the first we really hear about him is that he's a Union doctor in the Civil War, a Union surgeon. Um, some reports say that at the Battle of Bull Run, when the bullets started to fly, so did Dr. Bliss. He ran, leaving a lot of wounded soldiers to die. Um, so his uh, career was checkered to begin with. But somehow or another, Lincoln ends up making him uh, the head doctor over this armory hospital. But he's not the one to call, uh, be called in to work on Lincoln. This uh, younger doctor, a subordinate of his, is the one to get there on scene first and preserve Lincoln's life for just a short period of time. And Dr. Bliss pretty much just stands in the background around Lincoln's deathbed and does nothing. But that didn't stop him from using his presence at Lincoln's deathbed towards his own benefit, and pretty soon he's spreading stories that he's one of the doctors that treated Lincoln, which wasn't true at all. So let's leave Dr. Bliss right there, and let's skip forward to 1881 to yet another presidential assassination, this time it's James Garfield. James Garfield is shot by an assassin twice. One bullet grazes his arm and the other one lodges in his chest. Guess who happens to be standing about 40 feet away at the time of the assassination? Todd Lincoln, Lincoln's son. Now, for whatever reason, we don't know. Dr. Bliss knew the Lincolns and Todd Lincoln calls in Dr. Bliss to treat James Garfield. The very first thing that is done is the bullet wound is probed. But Dr. Bliss had issues with this new idea of germs being presented by a guy by the name of Lister. Lister said we need to sterilize our equipment. Well, Dr. Bliss had his own ways of thinking about it, and he said that's a bunch of hogwash. So Dr. Bliss just begins to probe the wound with his dirty finger and his dirty probe. And he probes and he probes and he probes and he becomes convinced that the bullet has hit Garfield and traveled south and is somewhere around his liver. But he can't find the bullet. So another man hears about what's going on with President Garfield. Some days have gone by. Garfield's still alive, but the bullet can't be found. Well, the man that hears this news is none other than Alexander Graham Bell. He had recently uh, invented the telephone and another new machine very, very recently, literally just days before the assassination. And this new machine he invented, he called the induction balance. It's a metal detector. So Bell realizes, I've got a metal detector. I can find this bullet. So he's called in to scan Garfield. Now, Bell was no dummy. Even though this was the first metal detector, he had invented this thing. He knew that if there was any other metal present, it was going to cause a problem. So Bell asked the doctors 
to make sure that President Garfield wasn't laying on his brand new spring coil bed mattress. That was kind of a new piece of technology too. Up until that point, beds had been feather beds or stuffed with straw or something like that. But Garfield had a coil spring mattress. Well, for whatever reason, Dr. Bliss did not listen to the instructions. So when Bell showed up with his metal detector and began to scan the president, he ran across something that us metal detectors run across all the time. Some interference. He could not find the bullet. Now, he kind of scratched his head and he took his metal detector and he went across to a veterans hospital where a bunch of wounded Civil War veterans were that had bullets still in their body. And he lined them up and he scanned them one by one and the machine worked perfect locating the bullet in every single one of those soldiers. So he goes back for a second attempt and has the same results at Garfield's bed. The machine just could not find the bullet. Now there is also another problem going on. Dr. Bliss was so positive that he had followed the track that that bullet had made south down to the liver. That was the only place that he allowed to be scanned. In fact, Part of the problem was Dr. Bliss was such an arrogant guy. He wanted all the glory. He didn't even want Bell to have any sort of fame for locating this bullet. So Bliss himself used the metal detector. He didn't allow Bell to do it. So Bliss is using this little machine scanning around the liver, nowhere near the bullet. The bullet is actually lodged between Garfield's heart and lung the bullet had traveled a little bit north. So the second attempt fails. Now, Bliss has had enough of all of this, what he viewed as quackery. So he comes out publicly and excoriates Bell and his new metal detecting machine and says it's all a bunch of junk, it doesn't work. Well, poor President Garfield. Here he is being probed for this bullet. No anesthesia. He's in incredible pain, and he lays there for two and a half months, slowly getting worse and worse. Infection is racking his body. What started out as like a three-inch bullet wound is now a 20-inch long tunnel due to all the probing done by Bliss with his dirty instruments. And it is infected, and President Garfield is losing weight. Now, another little interesting side note to the story is that there were several great inventions made around this one event. It seemed like everybody was trying to come up with all sorts of ideas to make this problem a little bit better. So a couple interesting inventions were made. Um, it was in the summer in Washington, D.C., and it was extremely hot summer. So the temperature's like around 100 degrees, even in the, the little room that Garfield was laying in, and he's miserable. So somebody decides, we've got to figure out a way to cool this room off. So they get six tons of ice, and they soak cotton cloths in ice water, and there were a little electric fans back then. And they blow these fans across this ice and across these uh, wet cloths, and it actually works. It was the first example of air conditioning and they got the temperature of the room like reduced like 20 degrees the second invention was the waterbed at some point garfield needed to be moved and uh, they were afraid that all the jostling would do him in so they had to figure out a way to move him on a bed where he uh, didn't get bounced around so some army engineers uh, glued some rubber together uh, and filled it the inside with water and made this water mat to lay him on. So there's your water bed coming around. Well, nothing helps. Nothing helps at all. Garfield gets worse and worse. Now, Dr. Bliss, he was not to be outdone in the invention department. He sees all these great inventions popping up around him. So he decides he's going to invent something. Oh, and it was terrible. Garfield was not able to eat. So Bliss decided that if they could not take food through his mouth, that he could ingest food through other orifices. And he begins to inject Garfield with a mixture of beef stock and blood. And I'll just leave it at that. It was painful. It was 
pleasant and it had already been proved medically you can't eat food any other way but through the mouth so that's that two and a half months later garfield dies oddly enough 10 days before he dies dr bliss tells him president garfield i think you're out of the woods now not the case so you would think that bliss would just been run out of town on a rail that he would have been just shamed but he wasn't he was able to sneak his way around it and place blame everywhere else well it wasn't the last president that was going to die because of dr bliss let's jump forward in time one more time to 1901 and president mckinley who is also shot by an assassin now mckinley has the same problem that garfield had in that he's got a bullet in his body but nobody can find it. By 1901, X-ray had kind of made its way onto the scene just a little bit, and there was an X-ray machine like 10 minutes away, but they were so concerned that moving the president would kill him that they couldn't get to the machine. But there was a machine out there that could have found the bullet in McKinley's body. The induction balance machine. That's right, Alexander Graham Bell's metal detector. Unfortunately, because Dr. Bliss had come out and blasted the machine as useless technology, none of the doctors even considered using it. And McKinley died 10 days later from infection. So there you have it. Metal detectorists. We get called pirates. We get called looters. We get called nerds. Nobody wants us around until you lose a ring. You got to find an old metal sewer pipe or a president gets shot. 